Much of the world always seems like it's on the brink of some disastrous event. There's a supervolcano that could erupt in the next hundred years. A huge earthquake could cause a tsunami that could wipe out a chain of islands somewhere. Now, we aren't making light of these events as they are terrible things to think about. Luckily, there's also no telling when they could happen. However, there are some other potential disasters that scientists have studied and have somewhat of a more solid timeline on. While nobody knows for sure when these events could unfold, there is a possibility that they could happen in just the next 10 years. Here are five natural disasters that could happen by the year 2030. Alaska is one of the most picturesque places in America. It is an amazing mix of rugged landscape and arctic tundra. It is also a place where some of the most majestic mountains in the world can be found. Running along many of these mountains are enormous glaciers, moving walls of ice that slowly creep towards the oceans. As they do, they ever so carefully carve deep tracks into the earth known as fjords. They are truly a sight to behold. One of the most beautiful ones in Alaska is known as the Barry Arm Fjord on Prince William Sound. Scientists have reason to be cautious of this area, though. Studies have shown that the slope on the fjord has slid around 120 meters between 2010 and 2017. It is a slow-moving landslide caused by glacial melt. Typically, when we think of landslides, we have pictures of entire sides of mountains giving way. So, it may not seem like that big of a deal on the front end for the slope to only be moving but not breaking free. However, that's only the case for right now. Researchers know that very soon, the compromised soil will not be able to hold the weight. This sudden release will cause tens of thousands of cubic meters of soil and ice to slip into the water below, resulting in a tsunami that would devastate villages and communities throughout the Sound which are home to hundreds of people and visitors. Fishermen, tourists, and members of the indigenous group called the Chugach could potentially lose their lives in a matter of minutes from the wave that washes over the area. Hopefully, there will be some signs that the landslide is imminent, giving locals time to get out of danger. But this event pales in comparison to the next one. Southern California has always been a hotspot for earthquakes and seismic activity. The reason for this is due to the fact that it sits along a major fault line known as the San Andreas Fault. Here, the Pacific and North American tectonic plates come together, constantly grinding against each other. This grinding has been the source of many earthquakes over the years. The vast majority of them have been small, barely even noticeable. From time to time, though, the earthquakes have been incredibly powerful. The residents of the area do talk about something else, though. They reference an event that will happen one day and call it the Big One, a quake that will cause billions of dollars in damage. It is impossible to know when the Big One will strike, but scientists are agreed that it will happen, and when it does, it will be devastating. What makes this area unique is the fact that the San Andreas Fault is part of three faults that form something like the letter Z. The bottom fault is the San Andreas. The top one is the Ridgecrest Fault, running near the cities of San Jose, Oakland, and San Francisco. It is known to be very active. If it were to have a really big earthquake, measuring at least a 7.5, it could trigger the Garlock Fault, which is in the middle. That would subsequently cause a reaction that could lead to the San Andreas Fault becoming active. These events could also happen in reverse order, but in any case, it would shake the entire state with violent force. Cities such as San Francisco, Los Angeles, San Diego, and Oakland would be at incredible risk, as would the millions of people living there. The western United States is the area of the country that is synonymous with having earthquakes. You never really think of somewhere like Missouri, Tennessee, or Kentucky being seismically active. However, in these eastern and central states, earthquakes are common as well, just not as large. All along the Mississippi River area, small microquakes happen on a regular basis, but are not strong enough to be felt on the surface. While there is an actual fault line here, it's hidden from view buried deep by river sediment. 
In the winter of 1811 and 1812, the New Madrid seismic zone generated a sequence of earthquakes that lasted for several months, including three very large quakes that are estimated to be between magnitude 7 and 8. These three earthquakes destroyed several settlements along the Mississippi River, causing minor structural damage as far away as Cincinnati and St. Louis. The tremors were felt even farther away in Hartford, Connecticut and Charleston, South Carolina. There was even an uplift in the fault line that temporarily reversed the flow of the river. Geologically, the area is the same as it was in the early 1800s, meaning that there is a possibility for future earthquakes with the same intensity. If a 7.7 .7 magnitude earthquake struck the area, which is similar in strength to the ones from the 1800s, the destruction would be catastrophic. It would damage about 84,000 buildings and destroy 37,000 more, almost all of which would be residences. Over 15,000 people could lose their lives with an additional 120,000 displaced. Total damages would be in the hundreds of billions of dollars. One of the worst disasters resulting from an earthquake happened on December 26, 2004, when a 9.1 earthquake struck just off the Indonesian coast of Sumatra. The resulting tsunami devastated many regions along the Indian Ocean, resulting in nearly 230,000 deaths. 15,000 of those deaths occurred along the Indian coast. It illustrates the incredible power that earthquakes can have. While the eastern coast of India suffered greatly as a result of the tsunami, the western coast is actually under great threat as well. This threat doesn't come from the same place, though. Along the western coast of India lies an area that is very unique and active. It isn't a fault. Rather, it is a tectonic deformation. The collision of the Eurasian and Indian plates has resulted in two spatially offset subduction zones, the Makran zone to the south and the Himalayan convergent margin to the north. Between these two zones is a deformation, a system of slip faults known as the Chaman Fault System. As the Indian and Eurasian plates constantly collide and grind against each other, this tectonic deformation that connects them acts as something of a tuning fork reverberating the activity that happens in the other areas. As much of this area runs under the water along the western shores of India, the possibility of activity also means the possibility of tsunamis washing away much of the area. As India is the second most populous country in the world, it is possible that hundreds of thousands of people would be at risk, not to mention billions of dollars of property. Earthquakes as a whole are incredibly scary things. But, believe it or not, there are different types of earthquakes. The most dangerous kind is known as a megathrust earthquake. These are quakes that occur in a subduction zone, a region where one of the Earth's tectonic plates is thrust under another. As the two plates constantly move towards one another, they become stuck. Eventually, though, the buildup of strain exceeds the friction between the two plates and a huge megathrust earthquake occurs. In the northern area of Chile, one of these subduction zones exists and has been known to cause catastrophic megathrust earthquakes. In 1960, the country experienced a megathrust earthquake that shook the region for nearly 10 minutes. The Valdivia earthquake, as it was eventually named, triggered a tsunami with waves more than 38 feet tall. It decimated parts of the Chilean coast, and even traveled across the Pacific Ocean, causing damage in Hawaii and Japan. Today, the area remains as volatile as ever. Most recently, in 2010, there was a huge earthquake in this area that measured an 8.8 .8 magnitude. It was the sixth largest event in recorded history, taking the lives of about 550 people and causing financial losses to the tune of 4 to 7 billion dollars. Luckily, the area is sparsely populated. However, larger earthquakes would have more disastrous effects. Should an earthquake ever measure in the area of 9.2, it would not only cause tsunamis, it would trigger volcanic activity in the area, which has also been known to happen. It would end up being the perfect storm of disasters, with the potential to take the lives of people in countries near and far. Natural disasters will always happen whether it's hurricanes or tornadoes or large events like the Yellowstone eruption. It's just a much scarier prospect when you realize that some of them could be right around the corner. 
We would like to stress that while scientists do believe these events will happen, there is no telling exactly when. They could happen by 2030 or in a hundred years. The best advice we could give is be prepared and have a plan in case of an emergency. To see another video like this one, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching and we'll see you all in the next one.